Headlines, a 15-year-old girl, a hostage, an abductee, escapes to where police and is gunned down, murdered by the police. Headlines all across the news today, yesterday, this week, all about this hostage who was taken by her father and then gunned down as she fled towards police for safety. That's what the headlines say. It must be true. The Department of Justice failing to release the totality of events nearly two years after this whole incident has taken place and is now resurfacing just in time for election interference time, right? It's this whole time when COVID came out last in her uh, last election cycle. Now we have a comment coming through. I don't want to go down any rabbit holes like that today, but I'm, if you dig into this case, do we have another Breonna Taylor type situation here? Or maybe we're only being told enough to make us angry and mad and anti-police. I don't know. Tyler from Anti-Hero Podcast, myself, Jonathan Bates. We're going to break it all down. We're going to show you the totality of the events and why independent journalists aren't asking the questions that would paint the most broad picture of this incident. Why aren't they doing that? Why? What is the disservice here? Why the disservice? Uh, is independent journalism dead? I think so. And this is just more proof that journalism is dead. And this is why mainstream and legacy media hate podcasters and hate independent journalism. We're going to get all to it in just a second. Today's show brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack uh, wellness company dot com forward slash wolfpack and factor meals dot com forward slash wolfpack we'll be with you in just a moment the growing calls across the nation to defund the police to end policing as we know it. off the charts violence in new york city 11 people shot in just eight hours on this is sunday about the police officers officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it, away from it. i don't have the answer why media fails to give us all the information. Maybe they think we're stupid. Maybe they think we can't handle the truth. Actually, a, a West Point guy once tweeted back at me that that's exactly it is. We're not smart enough to know. I thought that was a bold take, but a stereotypical take from somebody from West Point. You know what I mean? There's a lot of brainwashing that goes on with our military leadership that comes out of West Point, in my opinion. I've met very few officers from West Point that I appreciate. I think the American people are smart enough. I think there a, a number of them are smarter than some of our men and women serving in the military. I served in the military and 90% of the people in my neighborhood are smarter than I am. 95% of our listeners are smarter than I am. I don't think that's the case. I think there is an agenda. No, I, I think it's proven that there's a political agenda and that we need to hate police for whatever reason. And this comes about every election cycle. And I think this is further proof of that. And I encourage you to fact check me real fast and just type in Savannah Graziano on your Google webs and read every single headline and read all of the articles, but you won't find the truth or anything close to the truth in these articles unless you go all the way to the very bottom in the last paragraph of each article. Or if you click on the little highlighted blue tabs that are very obscure that paint a completely different picture than what's being told in the original article. Why, why put a hyperlink to another article when you could have just put the real truth in the article that you're already sharing us? It makes very little sense. And I hope that a real street cop like Tyler from the Anti-Hero Podcast and a real law enforcement first responder officer in various positions, Jonathan Bates, can help me with this because it's, I'm very confused by it. And I don't want to mislead you with my C- minus at best knowledge. I wanted to bring some other people that are smarter than I am. And I hope that you guys will pay attention to this and you'll follow along with this. And listen, you, you, we had a lot of people in the chats, a lot of people in the chats, a lot of people watching today. I'd love to hear your opinions as we go through the totality of this. And let me know if you believe that this quote unquote independent journalist, did he do a good job? Or did he, is it apparent that he had ulterior motives 
when quote unquote independent journalizing this? Why was he the only one? Why wasn't anybody else trying to dig into this case that's so important and is so glaringly bad for police? Why wasn't anybody else willing to dive into the case and answer the questions that we still have? Or why do we still have these questions? As you'll find out here shortly, it's because the Department of Justice doesn't want you to know the answers. It's so bad that the sheriff of San Bernardino had to come out on Twitter to give his side of the story. Because nearly a, two years after this event has even taken place, or over a year after this event has taken place, we still have very few answers that are answers they have. They're very easy answers to give. But why won't they give you the answers? Is it A, because you're stupid and you wouldn't know what to do with that answer? Is it B, it completely clears the cops and it paints a completely different picture than what headline news has displayed? And you would have to say, well done, cops. Or is it C, none of the above? And we're all just wrong and stupid. And this independent journalist is 100% right. And he presented the facts that you need to know, and that's it. Tyler from Anti Hero Podcast. Good morning, sir. What's up, buddy? How are you doing? I love your shirt. That's one of my favorites. It's my son's favorite shirt from Refracted Wolf Apparel. It says be confrontational. Love to see it. It's literally one of my favorite shirts. I don't get to wear it anymore because my son wears it uh, almost every time we skateboard uh, at the skateboard park. I don't know why he loves it so much, but uh, he's got some holes ripped in the back of it from doing lots of tricks and falling on his ass. But uh, he just loves it. He likes them even more with the holes in it. Um, I was wearing the uh, defund dancing cop shirt all morning and then I... Uh, I got a little bit of coffee spilt on it, so I had to change into this jacket. But uh, you guys had a big week on the Anti Hero podcast before we jump into today's show. You guys had a Marcus Luttrell Anti Hero podcast that is just blowing up. Uh, Dietz, the wife of of the uh, fallen Navy SEAL during the Lone Survivor, Daniel Dietz, uh, messaged one of my close friends, You're Real. And uh, and then also the interpreter's son from that event also reached out and we, we put him in contact with you and forwarded that information. And I guess he's getting messages. But I guess that is a story that hasn't been told correctly. I, I'm just like you, man. I have when I hear these things, I'm like, what? Because it's been the merit. The narrative in these situations have been has been so finely tuned that it's it, like when you hear anything different, you're like, Wait, what? It's like, it's like knowing that your parents weren't your real parents. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, I will say that that when I was young, I was in the uh, I was in the special forces qualification course when I read that book, and there was a part of the uh, the course where you had to guard the Bravo compound, which is where they house all the SOCOM weapons from Uzis, flamethrowers, every weapon you could possibly imagine is in this place, and you have to do a rotation sitting there and watching the cameras at the fence. Everybody has to do it. And I read that book um, on my my shift. And it's the only book I've ever cried while reading. I was that emotional reading this book and reading Marcus's story. So when I heard your podcast, I was like, no, I hope this isn't true. And then I started hearing from uh, another guy that I know that works with the CIA. And he's like, bro, that's true. That's yeah. true. And I'm at, and then when Dietz's wife reached out and uh, and uh, the interpreter's son reached out, I mean, they're all saying it's true. They're saying I, what you're saying is true. I, I, I remember years ago watching him stand up and talk a motivational speech about crawling seven miles on his hands and knees to safety. And I was like, that's the most inspiring thing I've ever heard. Yeah. A, a motherfucker wounded uh low crawled like the old school right. like pull yourself seven miles I was like that's impossible i had so much it's just it's disappointing because yeah. i put that that was a standard in my head a man can do that like yeah. now knowing that a man didn't do that yeah 
Yeah. Um, but you know, that's what anti here is all about. And it's uh, one of the just, yeah, your podcast is growing so fast and, uh, and it's so good to see. And, and the content is incredible. It's actually some of my favorite content on the interwebs these days. So appreciate you guys. Thank you for, for joining us here on failure to stop. And it's good to have part of the team. May 2nd, we're going to be in Kissimmee, Florida. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be at an Irish bar. What's the name of the Irish bar? Do you remember? Mulligans. Mulligans. We're going to be at Mulligans. What time? Man, I'd say probably seven or eight. I mean, we'll, we'll I, I we'll, say that, and then I'll end up being there at just, five or six. <laughs> right. Just, you know, that we'll probably kick things off around seven, but we'll probably have to be there a lot earlier than that, setting up stuff. So we won't be hanging out. We'll be, we'll be actually working until seven. But if you want to drink with us, break bread with us, we'll be there with uh, police. Um, uh, what, what is it? Police training? Street cop training. Street cop training. We'll be out there with a street cops training seminar and um, we'll be attending the, the seminar as well. So if you're at the street cop seminar, come by the uh, refracted wolf apparel uh, table and the first responder coffee company table. We'll all be sitting there hanging out, supporting those guys. And then we'll have a live podcast at Mulligan's. No, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a blast, dude. Um, we're going to be slinging drinks everywhere and just storytelling. It's going to be fabulous. So uh, before we dive into this really quickly, everybody in the live chats, Armory, Knight, Cupcakes, Will Cray, Abby Ellsworth on being a police officer. You know, I almost brought you up, Abby, in my intro. I almost brought you up in my intro. What I was going to say was, you know, I served with a lot of men. I've served with a lot of men in a lot of different capacities from conventional army, unconventional army. Uh, I've deployed, um, I've served with men on the conventional side deployed and the unconventional side deployed. I've served with cops. I've served with SWAT members. I've served with detectives. Um, I've served with just about every type of person you can imagine. And not one of those people that I've served with or the people that I hear on, on being a police officer podcast by Abby Ellsworth and other podcasts like it, Things police see, I think was another one uh, that, that I've heard of out there. Humanizing the badge. I've never come across anybody that says or was dumb enough to say our hostage is coming towards us in full kit. We should kill her dead now or, or accidentally like that. So when this story, which was sent to me by many of you, it was giving me flashbacks of the Breonna Taylor case when I used to get emails from my friends that were anti-cop or wanted to be anti-cop about the Breonna Taylor case. Like, how did the cops kill somebody asleep in their bed that was an EMT worker that, that was the wrong address? It was a no-knock warrant. You know, and we wait a few months and find out that none of that is true, but yet the department of justice is still investigating as if that any of that was true. And, um, that was a tall tale sign. Also, we had the Gretchen Whitmer case, the department of justice went in and kind of like did a double jeopardy type thing there. It's very confusing. I know it's not double jeopardy, but it feels like it. These guys are acquitted by a jury of their peers because there was more feds involved in the Gretchen Whitmer case than there were anybody else. So it was the feds idea. It was their plan. They made this happen and they were acquitted in like two hours. And the department of justice went back in there, retried them, gave them no jury and found them guilty. And now the Department of Justice is in charge of this case. Two years later, we're not getting the answers that we deserve as a people. And I think I know why. And I think you're going to know why, too, when we get into this case. So uh, before I get into it, do you have anything else you want to add, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, playful time with the chats? So, uh, you know, we got all the house cleaning shit out of the way. Just May 2nd, 7 o'clock, Mulligans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come down to um, it, 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 it's, it's during the street cop training conference. That's so like... April 29th through May 3rd. Uh, we, we're doing the anti-hero after party that Thursday night at the pub with uh, with all of us. So if you're there, like Eric said, just come hang out. And uh, thanks for everybody that supports us. Yeah, we do need a mascot for the weekend. Um, if you have a mullet or if you have some kind of obnoxious high and tight and you want to be a character, please reach out to me. But you you have to literally be a character. Um, and you'll have to make cameos in and out and surprise visits. More to follow on that. All right. 
we have difficult to look at pictures uh, producing for us today because Dead Legs still on the road, uh, meeting and greeting fans all over the country. Also, part of their lighting, uh, police they they light up police cars and customized lights, and they actually worked on the presidential motorcade lights to get them all flashing in the the same tune and all those things. So they're they're having a good time traveling around right now from Colorado to. Uh, DC all the way up to New York. So kudos to him and uh, filling in today is John. I'm sure he'll chime in with anything that we have. So uh, uh, John, are you there? Can you hear us, John? Okay. Yeah. He might not be. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm just, I'm rendering that video so that I have that for you when it's time. Oh, no problem. I just wanted to make sure we could hear you if you wanted to chime in whenever you want to. Just feel free. I'm um, here. Good morning, Foxy. <laughs> here, <Cannon>. oh. <laughs> Davey, Will Cray, Low Ren, Armory Knight, all you guys in the live chats. Nightskin coming in strong from Sweden, it looks like. Will Cray, we appreciate you guys being in the live chat. So today's case is out of uh, San Bernardino County. Um, you know, it, headlines will say that weeks after they shot a 15 year old autistic child, dot, dot, dot. Scroll you always, down. You always got to throw in a kicker. There's always something that makes it worse. So, <laughs> there, there, there was probably a, a probably a dog in the car too. Right, a 15 year old autistic child killed by San Bernardino police. Dot 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 dot. Go down to like the third paragraph of the article. Who is carrying a hoe, a garden hoe, and charging at officers as they entered the residence? Oh, well, that paints a big picture. You know, you make it sound like San Bernardino officers just went in there and blasted a 15-year-old autistic kid. By the way, I'm pretty sure that like 85% of the nation now has autism. It seems like every person I talk to uh, has a kid on the spectrum. Everybody? What, you every, got a kid on the spectrum? Every single person is neuro neurodivergent now. And everyone, not only that, but do you, Eric, do you remember when we were kids? Do you remember like when there was like, there was usually like one kid that had it in your class and like... He was suitably ashamed of it. Now everybody's running around talking about how goddamn proud they are to be neurodivergent or whatever. It's just, yeah. Uh, you just need one more thing that makes you special, right? And, you know, it can't just be that you're good at something because nobody's good at anything anymore. It's just like, oh, my brain's weird. I'm going to tell you all about it. John, yeah. John wants to be the only one that's autistic. I want to be the only one in this podcast that's autistic. <laughs> I wear these furry ears and tails because I'm autistic, but it's very reminiscent of the ADHD days where everybody had ADHD yeah. and everybody was on the ADHD spectrum. And, and then they put every single child that they possibly could on Ritalin to change their brains. And I think that's because ADHD kids rule the world. I think ADHD kids are more optimistic. They're more likely to become um, entrepreneurs, small business owners. Um, and that's not what the machine wants. The machine wants you to be in your cubicle. They want you to work in your nine to five. They want you to be in debt to all these material things like boats and cars and motorcycles and uh, extremely in debt. You have to have a bigger house for a family of three or four. And, um, and so that we have to medicate these ADHD guys uh, right now because they're the problem. Uh, I really do believe that. Um, I, I was a victim of that. Uh, I did, luckily, I didn't fall for it. I didn't, no, I didn't no. take it. You're, you're an entrepreneur with your ADHD. I, I have attention <laughs> surplus uh, normal order or whatever you would call it, I guess. And that's why yeah. I, I can't be nearly as busy as you. Yeah, I can do a lot of things at one time thanks to my uh, superpowers. Hey, ADHD. Hey, Eric, John is yeah. more retarded than you. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Now, you raised your hand when I said autism. Do you have like an autistic kid or something? No, I was saying I'm autistic. Oh, are you? Yeah, then John just shamed me. So I now... thought you had to be like really good at something to be autistic. What now, you... <laughs> Tyler, being on the spectrum is the thing you want to be. So you and I are actually taking over the podcast right now. How cool we are. Yeah. How neurodivergent we are. Eric couldn't even see it coming. <laughs> Damn, I'm such a loser. Ooh, mom, yeah. I need to see non-retarded motherfucker yeah um <laughs> so today's uh, breakdown of savannah graziano comes from san bernardino county the same department yes that killed the 15 year old autistic child who was trying to hit them with a bladed object uh running down the hallway of their of a house um and here we go again and and if you read all the headlines to this they, they look terrible um and even the way that this independent journalist describes these events and how there are shortcomings and there are um, uh, 
there is, you know, I'll read his article here shortly and you'll see kind of what his words are. I don't want to put words into his mouth, mainly because they're too big for me to understand anyway. Um, but he's, he's going to explain that uh, he's going to allude to that uh, the police department isn't giving you all the facts. And he's right because they can't because the Department of Justice and the state of California, the state of California, the same state of California that's ran by Gavin Newsom, who's a part of the same California that hates America and hates law enforcement officers, they aren't releasing the facts or allowing them to release the facts. And I'm pretty sure the reason why is because if they release the facts, you guys would be like, holy shit, I think the cops, the cops might be uh, m maybe in the right here. At least they would have a chance in a trial. Um, by the way, no officers have been charged. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder why they haven't been charged. Do you wonder why? I mean, you've read the you've read the headlines, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, I do. I'm just thankful they're not wrongfully charged. Like, what a, don't like you a, think if you read the hand. headlines that they should be charged? If you just go off the headlines yeah. of every single article on what? every legacy media uh, site, CNBC, NBC, CNN. Yeah, well, I mean, but we've seen that before. Where the they were wrong, they were wrongfully described the whole incident was wrongfully described and the law enforcement officers went to prison when they when they probably shouldn't have had to but like you're saying in this case they didn't do that but if if they're that bad then the headlines would say it right but i mean the headlines are pretty bad oh. woman fear for her life 15 year old hostage in fear for her life escapes towards police and police shoot her you know let me I, look i'll read them for you I, i'll read that just so you don't have to take my word for it let's see um uh, Savannah Garziano sent by Sam Dernandino. Uh, let's see here. That's a uh, Washington post. That's the new one. 18 months after deputies killed Savannah Garziano, uh, police killed an abducted teen video shoe suit off that left teen girl dead. Uh, footage reveals new information. Gunfire from deputies killed teen. Uh, those were in the last day. Um, and that's just because my Google search here is uh, Savannah Garziano. Uh, and her father. So I think if you go on there and type them out, you'll see some other ones on there that are pretty damning, pretty ugly. And um, enough so that I was like, damn, this is crazy. You know, how did the cops do this? I went on Reddit and looked at all the comments on the Reddit and they were like these stupid cops who are so bloodthirsty and they think they're military tacticians and then, you know, they're too thirsty to shoot and kill and they'll shoot anybody, you know? And I was like, man, this case must be bad. And then I look at the video kind of released by this independent journalist. I say that in air quotes because I don't think he's an independent journalist at all. I think he's uh, the exact type of journalist that legacy media, mainstream media wants and the department of justice wants from you. And, um, and so it, it, it still doesn't paint a clear picture. Uh, it doesn't say exactly what was going on. And we're going to talk about it for, uh, first of all, so what this is, is they, they, I'd like to first start by saying that they call this an abducted teen, that they call this a hostage. There was one article uh, that said that they shot the hostage you know, running towards police. So this is going to be this man's 15 year old daughter. Yeah. What's your opinion on Amber alerts when a daughter or son willingly goes with the father? I don't, I don't think it's an Amber alert. I don't think that's what Amber alerts were made for. I think Amber alerts were made for child abduction, like your kid out front playing and somebody comes and takes them. Um, unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of bad uh, breakups out there in marriages and dads have to not have to. They shouldn't. But, you know, dads do the thing where they they keep their kid for an extended period of time when they shouldn't. And then they go across state lines. Mom freaks out. You know, you're the first deputy on scene. Uh, well, And that was always my red flag is, hey, man, this is I'll take a report for you. But this is not a law enforcement thing. Unless he said, like, in a text, like, I'm going to kill this kid. But that's never the case. Um, <laughs> Nigel says, talking to the microphone. Are you guys having a hard time hearing me? Am I not talking into the microphone? I can hear you. Um, uh, hit yes in the live chats. No, if, if you think that I'm... Blink twice if you can't hear Eric. <laughs> so, okay. Well, um, yeah. So, in this case, no, he says he can't hear me. Is this... Uh, 
Oh, Abby says yes. So um, maybe, it said, fine, maybe it said Swedish. Maybe it said Swedish internet um, or Norwegian internet, wherever Nijkin's from. Um, it's Sweden, by the way. Um, anyway, Red's in the chat, it looks like. So very nice. Um, here we go. So the, the, the dad shows up to an elementary school or near an elementary school. This is where it gets kind of confusing. They don't put this in any of the articles. Let me just go ahead and I want to show you the confusion here. Um, I'll just go for the first one I see, which is the Washington Post. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to subscribe to the Washington Post right now. Looks like it's not going to give me an option to read the Washington Post unless I subscribe. So let me go to the next one down. And I'm just doing this to prove to you that I haven't even read these. And I, and these are, so this one's coming from BBC. Uh, and we'll see what BBC has to say, right? Uh, video released by U.S. police shows the moment officers shot and killed a girl who they were attempting to rescue. Mm. Boy, that's a, that's a headline for you. It was believed that Savannah Garziano had been kidnapped by her father who was suspected of killing her mother. The two were fatally shot in the 2022 incident. The video shows Savannah, 15, was hit while obeying officers' orders after a car chase and a gun battle. Police said that they hope the video gives insight into the unfortunate events as investigations continue. The narrated footage provided by police includes video clips and audio from a police helicopter. It states that Savannah and her father, Anthony Graziano, were struck by deputy rounds and died of their injuries. Officials had not previously clarified whether Savannah had been fatally shot by officers or by her own 45 year old father. The footage, which also comprises witness dash cam clips provides additional details of officers long pursuit of a pickup truck driven by Graziano. Savannah was seated on the passenger side of the truck. Savannah had been living with her father in his truck and in hotels in the weeks prior to this episode, according to the associated press with no allegations of wrongdoing by Graziano. However, officials put out an Amber alert, a message warning the U.S. public of a child abduction for Savannah when her mother was shot dead the day before the chase unfolded on 27 September 2022. Helicopter footage of the episode shows Graziano's truck speeding down a fairway, freeway. Narration added that the clip says shots were fired at officers from both sides of the vehicle. The alleged shooter is unclear. What they don't tell you in the article at all is that there was a domestic and Savannah was in the car and that there are witnesses that say Savannah was a part of this domestic with her dad. Shots were fired. Additional questions answered. Who shot the bullets? What was Savannah's take in shutting the door? Was she helping the dad? Was she not helping the dad? Why did she go with them? Why won't they answer those questions? We're going to get into it. You, from what you understand, the domestic was with the mom the day prior in the car? Yes, uh, near a school. Okay. And all John, right. do you want to chime in on that? I don't uh, I know that uh, he at least shot at two other people. I'm not sure if that was related to him getting her out of school or what. Uh, I know that he, he killed his ex-wife and then shot at these two other people. But the mere fact that he's discharging a firearm near the school and that's nowhere near like a huge part of this, to me, that's a problem because, you know, we're all about school shootings and this this was at least involved in that. And nobody's talking about that. I, but I don't know what that means if nobody's talking about it. So this is this is from April 4th. This was from the Los Angeles Times. And, um, you know, again, this, this case happened in 2022. So um, and, and, and this is where it's confusing because this is where they put the hyperlinks that I was talking about at the end of the show, the beginning of the show. For the first time in nearly two years, it's coming from the Los Angeles Times. The public heard the voice of the San Bernardino County Sheriff deputy plead with his fellow officers to stop shooting a 15-year-old girl. A 15-year-old girl is in highlighted blue. On the side of a California highway in broad daylight, the audio was released more than 500 days after a sheriff's deputy fatally shot Savannah Graziano. Now, they say this 500 days. They say it as if it's the sheriff's department's fault when the sheriff's department turned this over to the state of California and the Department of Justice. They have no legal grounds to speak. They're in an ongoing investigation. Yep. San Bernardino can, cannot talk about this. Am I correct in that? I would think it would be a bad idea if they're still yeah. possibly facing a civil suit. Why, why say anything? Right. Well, if, if, or, if, or just be completely transparent from the get go. But I feel like the day 
the day you aren't transparent 500 days later it's kind of no matter what you say no matter well, here's the thing though if you get in a police involved shooting and the state of florida picks up the case and they say there's a gag order we're investigating this department i mean there's a lot of cops involved in the shooting i mean yeah. a lot yeah. a lot like well, probably half the department um, including the helicopter. So if there's a gag order and you can't talk about it, then who can be transparent? Yeah. I mean, the only person that can be transparent is who's running the investigation, which would be the department of justice or the state of California. Uh, am I wrong? You're, no, you're right. I just, it's the, it's just one of many, many, many circumstances in this case that are, it's unfortunate, but you're right. It's just, but you, but, but, you know, and we're going to, I'm going to play something from Twitter where you can tell the San Bernardino sheriff is like, this is crazy. We yeah. gave this investigation to the state. They're not telling you anything. And you're blaming me. You're blaming us. We did the right thing. We're not investigating this internally because our guy shot this girl and this guy. And we're going to give it to the state. And they're going to make this right. And then the state says, we're not going to tell the public anything. And now the San Bernardino sheriff, probably for political reasons, is yeah. allowed to be drugged through the dirt and his officers made to look like ruthless, retarded murderers for killing a hostage in a hostage situation. The audio was released more than 500 days after a sheriff's deputy fatally shot Savannah Graziano. Um... The teen had been abducted the day before by her father, who shot and killed Tracy Martinez, Savannah's mother, who's estranged wife. In Fontana during, and then here's the hyperlink I was referring to very uh, at the beginning of the show, domestic dispute near Cypress Elementary School. Okay, so let's type, uh, let's, let's hit the, the hyperlink here and see what near a high school means. Oh, now we go to a different article. This is from KTLA5. As more details continue to emerge about the fatal shootout involving a father and a daughter in San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department deputies, new surveillance video footage shows the violence that prompted the Amber Alert a day earlier. Anthony Graziano, 45, shot and killed his estranged wife, Tracy Martinez, at 7.30 a.m. Monday near Cypress Elementary School in Fontana, authorities said. Also in the car, 15-year-old Savannah Garziano, who investigators originally believed was a kidnapping, who originally believed was a kidnapping victim of her father's, but later said was an active participant in the Tuesday shootout. Huh. Ooh. That's interesting wordage. Surveillance footage obtained by KTLA did show proof that Savannah and Tracy were inside of Anthony's truck right before the homicide occurred. The video shows what appears to be an argument inside the truck, followed by Savannah getting out of the back seat to close the front passenger door, which remained opened as Anthony backed his truck down the street. Anthony kept backing until slamming into a van. Then five gunshots ring out, sending another family scrambling back to their SUV. The California Department of Justice is now investigating after both Garziano were both Garazianos were killed in the shootout with deputies near 15 freeway in Espera. Authorities believe Savannah who ran towards deputies while wearing a tactical gear before she is shot and her father was shot by deputies. According to the report, Los Angeles times, which cited the California attorney general's office, Savannah was likely unarmed as she ran towards deputies. She was likely unarmed as she ran towards deputies, but we're going to later re read and find out in other eyewitness accounts, not from police, but other eyewitnesses that Savannah was shooting from the vehicle. Huh? Interesting. Why are we, why are we leaving that out in every single news article? Because it doesn't maybe look could... good. It makes no, the police doesn't... look better. Oh no. Yeah. The fact that she, uh, that she shot it. Huh? Interesting. Eric is, is your synop right now is your synopsis of what happened. Do you think it was, do you, think it was an accidental shooting because of the rounds or do you think that an officer right or wrong engaged her as a target and then well, obviously we don't know why because he hasn't been able to explain himself if that happened but do you think it was an accident or do you think what i think is we have an independent journalist and i'm going to read his name here he's the one that's kind of breaking this story wide open and and I, and, and and he's kind of uh, let, let me read what his stance is, and, and I'll tell you that, and, and I'll tell you my opinion on that. I'm not trying to beat around the bush there. Um, I got to go back to my uh, my original 
The sheriff's department declined any follow-up questions about the release of information. All right, here we go. Um, video and audio released Friday to independent journalist Joey Scott show the events leading up to a violent shootout on the 15 freeway and verify that teen was shot and killed by sheriff's deputy. They also show that San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dickus mischaracterized important aspects of the case in his public comments in the aftermath of Savannah shooting mischaracterizations that the department never sought to correct. Again, if you're under a gag order, you don't get to speak at all. You can't speak on, on anything. The sheriff's department declined any follow-up questions about the release of the information in the Graziano case, which is under investigation by the California department of justice, the DOJ. Here's his quote from Mr. Scott, the independent journalist. My hope is that this video will be watched in its entirety and provide insight into the unfortunate events that unfolded that day. No, this is coming from the sheriff Dickus. Dickus said in reference to the incident video released by his department Friday, there has been speculation and misrepresentations about this case. Now, this is from the sheriff. There has been speculation and misrepresentations about this case, and I would ask the public to allow the DOJ to complete its independent investigation before reaching a conclusion. That tells me if the sheriff is saying there are mischaracterizations and the journalist is saying that there's mischaracterizations, what it's saying is that the Department of Justice is not telling you the whole story here. They're not, they're not telling you. The sheriff is saying in this article, there are misrepresentations, and I hope that you guys will wait for the DOJ's conclusion before you come to your own conclusion. And it's this independent journalist who is just desperate to make these cops look like terrible human beings. And how would he be mischaracterizing it? Well, I think if you say that she wasn't an act, if she if there are eyewitness testimonies that she was shooting from the passenger window. Well, that paints a completely different picture about this whole case. If there were guns found on her side of the car, these are answers they have, folks. These are answers to the case they have. They'll know whether or not there is gunshot residue on her firing hand. And if there's not, then she didn't shoot a gun. We would know that. And they would put that out there. Do you not think this independent journalist, if he knew that there was no gunshot residue on her hand, which they know, you don't think he wouldn't come out and say they shot her? Not only was she unarmed, but there's no evidence that she shot at police at all. They would say that immediately. They would come out and tell you that. But if there was, and it's the state of California, as I like to see it, well, they don't. That doesn't look good for 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 uh, for the media, for legacy media. It doesn't look good for the cops. Let's not give them that. Info. They don't need to know. They don't need to know if she had gunshot residue on her arms or not i'd like to know the answer to that yeah yeah i'd also like to know where their guns found on her side of the car they know that and they know where their shell casings on his side of the vehicle because you know if she was shooting out of her side the shell casings would be on his side of the vehicle and they would come from two different caliber weapons or two different weapons they know that almost two years after the incident they know but they're not telling you this independent journalist knows but he's not telling you. Why isn't he telling you? Because I feel like if the answer was there were no shell casings on his side and there were no guns on her side of the car, he would have put that in his report and he would have put that out to the public because it adds to the narrative that the cops looked bad and the cops fucked up. But they're not telling you that. My speculations are not telling you because there was guns on her side of the car. My speculation is that she probably did have gunshot residue on her hand and arm and that there were shell casings. That's my speculation because if there wasn't, they would have told you already. They're happy to give you all the information that makes the cops look bad, but why aren't they willing to give you the real questions, the real pertinent questions that any good investigator would ask an independent journalist would ask, well, department of justice, you said that there are several firearms. Were any on her side of the vehicle or any in her seats? Does she have gunshot residue on her hands? Why do we have a, a video clip of this young female, which we're going to show you here, happy, uh, happy go lucky walking through a gas station by herself, buying multiple drinks, only to assume that those drinks are for her father who kidnapped her, abducted her. Doesn't really seem like the behaviors of an abducted, abducted daughter, in my opinion. I don't think she would just go into the grocery store happy-go-lucky and buy her daddy or papa a Sprite. 
I don't yeah, that's, think, a, that's I don't, another big thing is i mean totality of circumstances bro but somebody that can i mean there is there is what's that syndrome where you like it uh, you uh yeah munch not munch out no. <laughs> not munch out <laughs> my proxy yeah stockholm uh, syndrome. Stockholm, uh, syndrome. stockholm yeah, yeah. Uh, but even at stockholm syndrome yeah your yeah, but let's just say it's not her dad, and she's got Stockholm syndrome. She's not in any like yeah, mortal you danger. You can't get back at home with moment. your father. <laughs> That's just called love, <laughs> right? That's just called loyalty. That's called ride or die. <laughs> um, and we're gonna break down the video here in just a second. First today's show is brought to you by Ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack five zero. Sleep so good, it's scary. I say there'd be a lot less mental illness in the world if we had better sleep i think as a as a first responder sleep is the, one of the most important things that and your diet um i don't want a first responder who hasn't had enough sleep uh coming to me in my most dire moment i want him to be well rested or as well rested as he possibly can be i want him to have the proper nutrients to fight through the adrenaline to work through the adrenaline dump um and to to have the sustainability to outlast the enemy that that has fallen in front of me so Ghost bed, giving beds that are, are giving 50% off to these beds that are made in the good old USA. They've been with us since day one. We've been with, I've been with ghost bed personally for almost four years now. Uh, been to their facility, seen uh, how these beds are made, how they're invented, the thought and the process. These guys are obsessed with sleep and, 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 and it is, they're so passionate about their beds. They're so passionate about their company and all their employees seem to love life. And I could tell, you know, I could tell when somebody's like doesn't want to be at work. I mean, I walked in and the customer service guy had his feet up on the desk. I'm with the owner of Ghostbed. Homie had his feet up on the desk, cocked back. What up, guys? What up? Jumped up, freaking high five, fist bump, went right back to his seat, threw his feet back up on the table. You know why? Because he's got a cool boss. You know why his boss is cool? Because he's got hardworking employees. When you have hardworking employees and you have a good boss, boss overlooks shit like that. You know? Nah, you, you're crushing, baby. Put your feet up on the desk. I love those guys, man. I loved every part of being down there. Uh, right now, 50% off for everybody in the Wolfpack. Use the promo code Wolfpack. I'm talking about their cooling sheets, that pillow. I don't go anywhere without my pillow. We're about to be on the road. I'll be in Maryland at a Tim Pool thing um, with my kids uh, on the 20th of this month. So I guess it's like next week or so. The following week after that, I'll be in Virginia with Jonathan Emord doing a fundraiser with the Senate to, to be Jonathan Emord. And then after that, I'll be in Orlando with, with uh, anti-hero podcast. And then, uh, and then the following week, I'll be with conservative Anthony down in Naples. I want to go to for that long. Me. No, I'm going to come home and then go back. It sucks. But <laughs> I'm going to have my ghost bed pillow with me every night. So uh, I'll be good to go. Also, we got factor meals.com forward slash will uh, I'm putting another order of my factor meals for that trip. And I'm going to leave them in that little cooler. That they summon these are fresh, never frozen meals delivered right to your door. Um, I'm going to travel with mine, and you put them in a microwave. It could be a peasant microwave at your first responder station. Two minutes, it doesn't matter. And you've got this delicious meal that you have chosen. This meal planning to the next level. Protein heavy is what I'll be going with because I'm trying to get jacked. But you can also do calorie conscious, vegan, vegetarian. You can do, uh, you can do carnivore if you want to do carnivore. Uh, a lot of you guys on the Wolfpack sending me messages all week. Um, I think it's hilarious that you guys send me foodie pictures of your factor meals as if like maybe you made them. I think that's hilarious. Two of you guys have done that uh, where you've like, I can tell you've undished it. And you've tried to do like a foodie pick. Well played. Well played. I appreciate it. I see what you did there. I think you guys are hilarious. By the way, you can find pictures of Factor Meals and all of our fans at uh, our uh, private Facebook group, FTS underscore Wolfpack. Come part of the Wolfpack. It's free to do that. You can also join us on Patreon. Um, and then we have the Wellness Company. Uh, we got that whole thing coming. We got the Doomsday Eclipse coming, baby. Uh, hopefully you guys have your pandemic relief meds, your survival kits, uh, wellness companies, got all your ivermectins, your anti, uh, your monochloral antibodies. They got your Z packs. They got your, uh, malaria pills, your industrial strength, ibuprofens, whatever you need to get you through whatever trip you're traveling on their pre-prescribed medications. So that you're not having to fight the zombie apocalypse, all the meth heads and the crackheads that are going to overtake all the pharmacies. Um, when the pandemics happen, you'll already have 
your prescription sent to your door in nice little survival cases and packages. Uh, a great preparedness package for you guys to stay healthy. It's a good peace of mind. Heller, the wellness company, use the promo code Wolfpack. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. Um, here's the 911 audio dispatch. Uh, towards Bronxville right now. I have a picture of the little girl that was in the front. She came in and got two sodas for me. And then number eight and the guest came to me and told me it's the same uh, Nissan Frontier and everything. They think like they were going down south on the 395 and they turned around. And you can see him going in front of our cameras. And he, he said he uh, uh, ended up going uh, east, uh, 58, towards Barso. So Eric's mic's on mute right now. Eric, you're mu you muted. I <laughs> muted myself. For those of you guys, audio <laughs> listeners out there, audio listeners, you can't see that video. But what you have here is a young 15 year old, well to do, well you know, well dressed, hair is combed, um, you know, doesn't suffer from like, uh, you know, oily skin or anything like that. Like that would show that she's dirty. You know, is what I'm trying to say here. She looks clean. She looks well kept, and she's wearing a. Uh, a hoodie that says Jesus or as a English speaking man like myself, Jesus, which I, I wasn't think, expecting. I don't think it said Jesus. <laughs> no, it said Jesus. You're trying to say because she's in Southern California. Is that why I said Jesus? And her name is Garziano. Is that Italian or is that Mexican? <laughs> is that Italian or Mexican? It could go either way. I don't know. But she's got a Jesus sweaty on. And I like that. I appreciate it. I like me some Jesus. I mean, again, why? And if you're an independent journalist, why aren't we putting more out about this girl? Is she a fanatic Christian? Were these far right-wing Christian extremists that the left has warned us about? No, because the independent journalists would have told us if that was the case. They would have told us that was the case. I don't know. I have no answers and neither does independent journalist. Uh, Mr. Scott, he doesn't have any of those answers either. So, uh, but yeah, not what you would expect hours before, minutes before she's about to get into a extreme gunfight with police. Um, you know, she's relaxed. She's calm. She's buying a couple of Sprites. Um, guessing they're not both for her. Again, she doesn't feel like, she doesn't look like she's trying to give any coded signals. She's not blinking her eyes. I'm abducted. Yeah. Save me. Um, <clears throat> anything alarming sticking out to you on that video? Not Nothing. yet. By the way, where they're at uh, in San Bernardino County, California, it looks like just barren desert land uh, for miles as far as the eye can see. So there's no buildings. There's no high rises. There's no um, uh, gas stations. Uh, and their route after they've left that gas station just looks like barren desert land. If you've been to San Bernardino, you probably know this more, more than anyone. Uh, nice. You can sense us 65 uh, bones in the uh, super chats. Thank you so much. Nice. Can we love you? Um, all right, let's play the next video. Here we go. This is from a, a I think this is from a bystanders dash cam. I was going to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Smash into a cop car. Always a kicker. All right. Um, basically, that's what you see there. Pretty hectic. Um, if you're just an audio listener, this is a, a, a private individual now. Yeah, so we, got, we got a private camera in a car and helicopter footage, and that's it. We have no body one camera released yet. And Bernardino they, don't, doesn't they weren't have... wearing any, Tyler. Oh, <gasps> can you fucking believe that at 2022, wow. San Bernardino doesn't have them? <laughs> well, San Bernardino was uh, the last department to hold out on getting body cam footage. Well, that backfired. Um, <laughs> well, again, if you're a good independent journalist and you wanted to go ask why. Uh, you would say why, you know, and it's like maybe they got they, defunded. That's why they couldn't fucking pay for it. I bet. <laughs> and I bet you that would be the, uh, a great yeah. answer. But also, like, you think about like the drugs that are going through San Bernardino. Think about the trafficking, and you know, I'm sure that they're spending a lot of money on other things that they really do need. Like that helicopter isn't cheap. My department didn't have a helicopter, so we could afford things like body cameras. But you know, it would be very hard to, uh, you know, need a helicopter for 
you know, all the missing people that are going to miss in that vast desert or to uh, rescue people or to drop cops off. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are really good reasons and not just, you know, from the civilian sake because that they just didn't want to and they didn't want to be transparent. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, and then you, yeah, you've also got to think that in a situation like this, when you're running and gunning, you're not really going, let me turn my body camera on. That's literally the last thing going through your brain is, oh, hey, let me make sure my body cameras. I will say, Eric, nowadays, cops are the body worn camera thing is so pushed and you get in so much trouble for not capturing video that your safety is now second compared to making sure that thing's fucking up and running. Like, and, 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 and I'm when I first got it, it was sold to us. Hey, don't you know, we can work with something else. I want you to focus on now. You're getting in trouble for so much shit for not having your body camera on that God forbid you fucking shoot somebody and you don't have that thing on. You're fucked. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people don't understand that body cameras are extremely expensive. One, you've got to pay for all of them and Axios, which owns everything in law enforcement. Then you have to have a server. Then you have to have a plan to, because these things don't last 12 hours on. So you have to have a plan of how you're going to rotate guys off the street to get them to charge. Then they have to get them off of the charger. So you have to have a massive charging station. You also have to, you know, what if you're on the way to the charging station and a call goes out and you're on this call for two hours and your camera dies. Um, now you're having supervisors that are running body cameras back and forth. I mean, it is a ruckus. And then how do you store all this footage? Who's going to store it? That's, Who do the, you pay? that's the, that's the big uh, money thing is the storage. I heard yeah. the hardware doesn't compare at all. No. The and then to be to manage the storage, now you got to have an evidence clerk that's well versed in how to rip this video from storage onto a CD so it can be played into a courtroom. So that's another full time job. They're going to have another full time person that's going to be in charge of getting the video from the police guard downloaded onto the server. You got to have another employee that just knows how to operate the server itself. So if the, you know, power surge happens or something like that. So you're talking a minimum of three full-time employees just to manage the software. And then you have to have an IT tech that's going to have to monitor all the charging stations and all the things. And cops are rough with everything these charging stations get damaged they break now you have to have somebody in charge of getting the broken and damaged body cameras out to get them fixed and get them back i mean it is a lot to manage body camera footage i'm not making excuses that's just you know, the reality well, of the battery the battery camera. the battery issue where your shit runs out my department bit the bullet and decided the best long-term decision was to buy everyone another battery. So now you got two batteries, which I can only imagine how expensive that was. Every single, oh, yeah. you know, it's another yeah. 4,000 batteries. Right. Um, you know, and, and guess who's going to suffer from that? You know, your drug dogs, your police yep. helicopters, you know, rescue boats, uh, rescue boats, training and services, you know, Narcan, you're going to get less Narcan. I mean, something's got to give. Well, I mean, in law enforcement, we've always been, and I say we, <clears throat> law enforcement's always been able to tell the public we're handling it, right? Speeding, they got motors. They're going to write some tickets, show some numbers. Drugs, drugs are always going to fucking problem. They're just going to show that they're making drug arrests. It's like every single issue in law enforcement is able to be, hey, we're doing something about it, and their unit does minimal effort, And but they what they can't get ahead of is this fucking liberal... Uh, takeover of cops like our leadership can't get ahead of it they're well, too they old. The power to it they bow to it yes and that's where they're going to lose everything but you know yeah. <clears throat> yeah um all right let me play this next clip here uh this is going to be from the helicopter this is getting to the shooting here we go for us to engage if he does end up uh, exiting and uh, making contact with you guys if he gets in the desert yeah, I'd like to point out really quick that the driver's side of the vehicle is a good 100, 150 yards away from any police vehicles. And um, it's kind of like a blind turn that this guy is navigating around a blind turn. He's doing a very good job at a high rate of speed navigating this curve. Uh, by the way, they are they're surrounded by desert here. Uh, looks like there's a golden corral 
uh, in the picture. Um, and so multiple police cars are going to be shot at this point. My first question, if I was a real independent journalist, like this, this guy that we talked about earlier is who's shooting. Who's shooting? Is this guy shooting across his daughter right now out the window and hitting police cars? Is that while driving at a high rate of speed around a, you know, damn near U-turn circle? Who's doing the shooting? Yeah. Go ahead. What? I was just going to say, if 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 cops return fire knowing that there's a 15-year-old girl in there, they're, they must have been taking heavy rounds. Right. Let's play it. You can see that you'll, you'll see some heavy rounds in the, in the police car directions. We're now trying to cut through the desert. Hey, um, he's he's kind of highway. Control here as he goes up that embankment. Do we have units on Bear Valley? He's calling out. I right, do. I'm two two one forty, dude. And we've got the road through the desert to another road. Let me know. Go for it. Right towards police. Yeah. Now hold on. Let's look at the 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 gunshots here. Now it looks like he's shooting at the ones on the right, right? He is because the dirt is flying towards the cops. He's not doing a good job. Now the cops are up on a berm. He's literally shooting into the berm. A lot of people are going to say, "What about police crossfire here?" That is a big berm, and there are cops on top of the berm shooting down into the desert, and then there are cops shooting into the berm. Um, I still would not be. I would still be very cognizant of where my bullets were going, um, but it doesn't paint a very good picture from the helicopter that they are actually sitting up. And so, yeah, he is shooting. At, there are cops to the left on her side and cops to the right on his side. I'm going to back this up a little bit and let's see what bullets are coming out of her side of the vehicle, if any. I don't know. So there is a cop shooting at the car because that dirt right in this area. Can you see my uh, arrow? My pointer yeah. arrow? It's No, uh, no. no you can't. Uh, Point at the screen with your hand. So there were some dirt pockets flying up from her side of the vehicle. I'm not able to tell if that's her rounds going towards cops or bullets ripping through the car and going towards the police. I wouldn't be able to to tell you what I see there. How about you, Tyler? Anything? Mm -mm, no. Do you need to see it again? You, you would have to fucking... Investigators are going to have to take this frame by frame and literally track every bullet and where it could have came from. Right. Just a Passenger, get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Okay. okay. How can they hear that? Now, hold on. Did you see that bullet hit that barricade? No. Watch this bullet hit this barricade. Watch. Okay. So, so you see the concrete barricade right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just keep your eye on that barricade. Get out! Get out! Keep your eye get on out! the barricade. Get out! Uh, see it? Yeah. Where did that come from? That, that came from him. What? Well, I don't know. But how were we hearing the deputy on the left call to her? Are they just using audio from maybe his dash cam and mixing it? Because I know the fucking bird ain't hearing that shit. We got no BWCs. Let me play it again. I want to I see that bullet hit that barricade. Get out! Passenger. Now there's more rounds being fired. and It's, un, it's not apparent who's trying to watch the barricade. Get out! Get out! Passenger, get out! Interesting. Um. Yeah, who shot that barricade? I don't see a single cop that could have shot that barricade from there. Um. Rest engage if he does end up. Passenger, get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Passenger, get out! Okay. Um, what I think is interesting there that you just saw was passenger get out, uh, passenger get out. Then you hear this very unaudible, like very weird audible doof, and uh, a plume of smoke come from the barricade. It doesn't sound like any of the law enforcement's guns. All the law enforcement guns sound like AR-15. This was a different sound. So I'm guessing well, Eric, that that was a gun coming from the car. Can anybody answer me how we're hearing this audio? I don't. I still, I'm just I, generally. I, I, I think you're right. They were probably mixing it together from the dash cams. They, when they were doing the final use of force presentation, I think they probably all just put it together. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, you'll be able to hear, you'll be able to hear the rotor guys later. They, they have some commentary on what's happening. So it's all mixed together. Yeah. yeah I'm going like, to play oh, it right now. But I mean, like, why, where's the dash cam footage? Yeah. Uh, well, if the cars are all like, you know, 
parallel along the road and they're these guys are all in this you know this chick died in front of his car <laughs> yeah you would have seen the bullet hit her maybe, here I'm, maybe, gonna, I'm gonna play the i'm gonna play it i'm gonna play maybe it that's for just you, not right? part of their public media package though <laughs> here we go She gets out of the car with full body armor on and helmet. And she takes about two steps and looks like she gets shot on about her second or third step. Yeah, she's not looking like a 15-year-old at that point. She's looking like a fucking soldier. <laughs> also, she's a bit of a badass, yeah. <laughs> somebody made a conscious decision to shoot her, and I'd like to know what that decision was. Did she make an affirmative movement? Did she not show her hands? I mean, there's nothing here in this video that shows me any of those answers. Hey, 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 hey. Leap through the air with two guns. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to play it again. Hold on. Hold on. Get out. You're gonna get up and run at the top. Yeah, you're gonna hit her again. So, is that? I don't know. This is a fucking shit show. This is about as big of a shit show you can get. And there's no way to have good communication on this scene. I'm assuming they're not multi multi jurisdictional, right? I'm assuming that they're not multi. Where you have two comm centers trying to talk to each other, like. This is best case scenario. This is all one department, all one dispatch channel. This is still too rapidly evolving to have effective communication. Like those guys at the top shooting down, they're just not able to hear everyone like hear each other. They you talk know. about at, about crossfire at one point. You can hear him going on about that. Uh, yeah, Slayer, damn it. A burn, but I mean, you know, he's putting a lot of rounds towards those guys. So I have no problem with them shooting back. You know what I mean? Like, um, you, you're not gonna let this guy just spray you down with a hose of bullets. But he, you know, Kingslayer Damocles. Damocles says, So you're saying the police told her to leave the vehicle, then shot her when she followed orders. Sounds premeditated to me. Well, oh, did she please. follow orders? Do we not, that's we not know premeditated that. murder? Is, King he's Slayer. on to us, Eric. They oh, caught us. That's premeditated. <laughs> they they literally they, they literally saw her and thought, like, here's my chance to murder. Someone. Yeah, I need to hire Kingslayer as Come my on lawyer, now. man. Yeah, yeah, I need him as my lawyer. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and again, King Slayer, we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, you know, uh, eyewitnesses say that she was shooting from the passenger side of the car. Now, if she's shooting from the passenger side of the car, I, I'm sorry, you start shooting at me. I don't think, you know, th there's very little chance for quitsies after that. Um, well, and especially if you have body armor and a helmet on. Here, here's, the here's the thing about being a cop too, man. All right, let's say guy number one at the driver wheel well, front of the wheel well is calling to her, right? Guy number two with his back turned to guy number one isn't hearing any of this because he's in a gunfight over there or thinks there might be a gunfight or he's just distracted. He turns around and he puts one in her chest. Not saying that's what happened, but let's just say qualified immunity is just for a reason. Human error. If I see or a guy up there in the berm doesn't know what's going on, and he's and he sees that girl in fucking body armor running at that deputy, and he takes a shot. That's it. Not not only that, Kingslayer Damocles. What if she throws her gun down, gives up, walks towards the deputy? She's got her hands in the air, but she's got a pistol duct taped right behind her neck. And then as they run out to go grab her, she grabs that <laughs> the style of John McClane and takes him out. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah. Kingslayer. <laughs> <laughs> she slays everyone. She uh, is the Kingslayer. <laughs> but you know, Kingslayer, in, in you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, um, the Department of Justice is the one that's not being transparent here, not San Bernardino. San Bernardino has wanted to, to talk about this. They're under a gag order and they can't. So it's the state of California's responsibility to give you the information, and they're simply not giving it to you. Here's the information you need, Mr. Slayer, is if eyewitness testimony says she was shooting from the vehicle, 
why hasn't the Department of Justice, California State Department of Justice, released that uh, the information of whether she has gunshot residue on her hands to where she fired a gun? Why haven't they released the information about where these firearms were located? They said they found several firearms. W were they on her side of the car? Were they on his side of the car? Um, why don't we have the statements from the police, uh, you know, any of the statements of the police? So, And here's the thing, Slayer. They know the answers to those questions. They're choosing not to give you the information. And you should be asking yourself why. Well, why should we not be able to know if she if she has gun residue on her hand and indicating that she fired a gun? Well, that paints a pretty clear picture of why the cop shot her. If she didn't, then we can all call these cops murderers and guys like me would be like, yeah, I don't I don't understand why they shot her. She, if she's done nothing, if you know she's a hostage, they're also not giving you all the information about uh, the father and their uh, why they were living in and out of this car, why they were near a school, who they shot at at this school. I and mean, there's a lot of information that the media, mainstream media, this independent journalist is not giving you. And you have to ask yourself why. And I think it's because legacy media wants you to believe and wants everybody to think that these cops were just 100% in the wrong, just like they did with Breonna Taylor. And, and if you want to objectively look at the Breonna Taylor case, you cannot tell me objectively that Breonna Taylor was in any way, uh, was was any, to put herself in any position other than to be shot by police. I know that this probably doesn't make sense, but you can't objectively look at that case and say Breonna Taylor was at all in the right in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to say she deserved to die. I don't think anybody really, I mean, I think some people deserved it. I don't think she necessarily deserved it, but she put herself into a position that made it highly likely she was going to die, and that's her fault. That's like if I go and play uh, chicken with a train and I die, yeah, I don't really think it's the train to, fault. She assumed a lot of risk, and I, I get sick of it because when criminal shit goes on, the first thing that happens is the media, the politicians, and the public are like, what did the police do wrong? Can we not fucking take two minutes to say, well, who was the jabroni who woke up and grabbed a gun and put on body armor and chose violence today? Why don't they get any shit for being fucking criminal well, miscreants case, and causing problems? Tyler, in this case, this he's they're dead. So that but people still want to put blame on somebody. I'm imagining. Well, and even I, if you, I could blame them for causing this. I'm doing. Yeah, it. that's what I was going to say is that, you know, let's say you don't want to blame the little girl. She's. The juvenile, she can't think for She's herself. She's probably the fucking ringleader. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to blame it, blame the fucking guy that did all this. Blame the dad. The, but this all happened because of him. Kingslayer, uh, it, it, obviously, you haven't listened to this show very long, or, or even li listen to our Breonna Taylor uh, oh, breakdown. Breonna Taylor, the uh, the jury acquitted Sergeant Mattingly in a matter of almost minutes. Uh, it was one. Of, it was a very very quick. Uh, acquittal, and it was because the evidence was overwhelming that uh, Breonna Taylor was extremely in the wrong, and so was the guy she was having an affair with that night, and so was her real boyfriend, who was absolutely a drug dealer with 100%, and they did not lie to get the warrant. Um, and you know, when you get the warrant and you uh, sniff, when your dog sniffs on something and hits on it, I, there, it, that evidence does, you don't have to open that package and ruin the investigation. Also, that one piece of evidence wasn't what made or brought that case at all. It was just another brick in the wall. As we discussed, there were several bricks in that wall. And that was just kind of like an outlier, like, oh, and one of our dogs hit on the package. Now the department of justice and legacy media they had failed so bad. It was literally, literally one of the biggest media failures. Trump was was guilty too. Trump fell for it too. I'm not giving him a pardon on the Breonna Taylor case. He fell for it too. He was like, oh, we're going to take a look at these no-knock warrants. There was no no-knock warrant that night served on Breonna Taylor. There wasn't. Yeah. You know, that whole, everything that you learned about the Breonna Taylor case from legacy media, when it came down to the trial, was all a lie. And so to back this up, just like the the the, the Whitmere case, the Department of Justice had to go back and was like, well, hang on. They went through it with a fine-tooth comb. As in, if they would have put the wrong date, they would have said, oh, they lied on the affidavit about the date of his birth. Or did they just get it confused and put 1983 instead of 1984. That's what you um, call a good faith exception on a warrant, by the way. If you have some little mistake by that, like that, that is not a big deal. And the, right. everything that you have heard from Ben Crump, he continues to lie about the Breonna Taylor incident <laughs> to this day. I mean, anybody that's going on anything that Ben Crump says is, you know, like, I feel sorry for you because Ben Crump has literally has a, one of the worst track records of all time. I mean, he's a laughing. You're guy. saying multiple cops have been fired. Go ahead and name names. Name them. 
I mean, you're saying multiple cops have been fired. So go ahead and go go ahead and pull that up on Google right now. Right. Don't, yeah. Don't just I mean, say multiple cops have been fired. We talked name, to Mattingly. Name. We've had Dexter Pitts on the show. Um, Literally, people who were there have been on this show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got you got John all fired up, King Slayer. Yeah. I get I'm sick like, of this shit. Well, I get here at the end of the day, showing up and then just fucking lying, and I get sick of them just perpetuating this bullshit. When people, the truth is knowable, and we know it here. We have had him on the fucking show. Well, you can retard the facts any way that you want to re retard them, um, and, and the media does a great job of that. But I mean, King Slayer, in your defense, like, listen, if you if you objectively, like. Go through that case and look at all the things that Breonna Taylor did wrong. Uh, how many cars have you rented, Mr. Slayer, that have been involved in a homicide? Probably none. I'd like to think none. She was in. She had two rental cars in her name that were both suspected in uh, drive-by shooting cases done by her boyfriend. She also was seen 30 times in the course of five days going to a known trap house that was uh, that had all these. Uh, the the uh, what, what condemned paperwork to be condemned by the city. It was where people go and shit and piss. There's no electricity, no running water. She was seen going there 30 times, dropping off a package and coming out with an envelope shaped like money, which she with her apartment there was fourteen thousand dollars. And this investigation on her was like three years long. Um, you know, she was with one of the highest ranking gang members in Louisville, and that's why when this went to trial and all that came out, like the jury was like. Oh yeah, this is ridiculous. She's and then she was like cheating on her boyfriend that night, and that's why this guy was able to sneak into the back of her apartment. Nobody knew he was there. She wasn't asleep in her bed. They got in a gunfight. Um, all of the witnesses who were all black as well uh, would account in the Breonna Taylor case that uh, the police were there. That they said Louisville Metro Police for over a minute and forty five seconds. They both testified in court. The old man upstairs and the young woman who is heard on body camera coming out and saying, "Would y'all stop? I have a fuck." baby in here and nobody wants to hear you guys knocking now i think the only thing that you're talking about as far as fire uh police being fired was how many bullets they shot into the house after sergeant mattingly was shot um that was a debate that didn't come up until after these cops were acquitted after sergeant mattingly was acquitted so like the, like i said just like the just uh the uh the whitmere case the department of justice was embarrassed and now they're trying to go through everything with a fine tooth comb and make these officers look bad because of it was one of the biggest media disasters one of the biggest lies ever told in america and louisville burnt down for it and nobody wanted to pay for that and they should pay for that because it was at it was apparent it was it was apparently wrong and false information. By the way, the DA that signed the no-knock warrant was also a liberal DA, so you can't put conservative politics in it, and the police department did not serve a no-knock warrant. They knocked several times over a minute and 45 seconds. Um, um, and so, yeah, so if you went through the whole case, uh, objectively, the, the the warrant was was perfectly fine. There, there was nothing on the warrant that, that, that any any agent, any police officer around the country, any DA would have signed off on that warrant. Um, and they're not lies. You can't call uh, mistakes lies. You know, there's so much paperwork and there's so many people involved in the paperwork. They're not lies. They're just mistakes. And in, and if you look at those, again, you have to look at it objectively and a jury of Sergeant Mattingly, you think, you think a jury in Louisville is pro-police? You're crazy, my friend. You're crazy. But they objectively looked at the evidence and it was overwhelming that Sergeant Mattingly was completely innocent. And so he was cleared of his innocence and mainstream media and legacy media couldn't let that go because they were going to be the ones that were going to have to pay for the burning down of Louisville. And you could talk, we've had, uh, we've had guys very close to that case. Um, Dexter Pitts on, we've had Sergeant Mattingly himself who was shot by Breonna Taylor's mister. I guess you'd call him not mistress, his, her, her mister. And, uh, and then returned fire and, and killed Breonna Taylor in the same hallway. Um, also, if you want to go in there and talk about the boyfriend hiding and not calling 911, refusing to come out, calling his mother, um, refusing to open the door, having an argument with police, knowing that they were the police. I mean, the Breonna Taylor case, if you still believe the Breonna Taylor case, I mean, we can have debates on other cases that I can understand that you would have an argument for, but there is zero argument in the Breonna Taylor case. Zero. That is no. And if you just look at it, um, just the way that that jury looked at it, you'll come up with the same conclusion. Um, let me go ahead and go back to this case. Let's play what the sheriff said at the beginning getting here, uh, which the Department of Justice in California has failed to tell you because they want guys like Kingslayer to believe this narrative that the cops just kill people willy nilly. Go ahead. Play the. Uh, oh, here, I'll play it. It's right here. I'll just edit myself here. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shannon Dykus, the sheriff of San Bernardino County. That's S-H-A-N-N-O-N-D-I-C-U-S. 
I'm here to brief you on an officer-involved shooting that occurred earlier today as a result of an Amber Alert that was put out by Fontana PD related to a homicide. The suspect in this case is believed to be Anthony John Graciano, and he was considered armed and dangerous as a result of that case and homicide that occurred yesterday. And he was also believed that he was with his 15-year-old daughter, Savannah. This resulted in an Amber Alert by Fontana PD and was transferred out through the California Highway Patrol. As a result of that Amber Alert, at 1025 this morning, a citizen called into our dispatch center and related that they thought they saw his suspect vehicle, which was also contained in the Amber Alert that I described earlier. Barstow deputies were dispatched to the area of Highway 395 and Highway 58, where the vehicle was seen. And as the deputies arrived, they encountered the suspect vehicle. A pursuit ensues. And as a result of that pursuit, the suspect immediately starts firing at our deputies, putting several rounds through the windshield of the patrol unit. The pursuit continues on Highway 58 to I-15 in the area of Linwood, where a second... By the way, we didn't even see that video. We didn't see the video of the shootout with the police where he shot through the windshield of the cop car. That changes the circumstances a lot, too. Uh, I know if you just put rounds in my buddy's windshield, that chase just became that much more serious. ...unit is involved, the suspect firing back at our deputies the entire time, and at which time the suspect ends up shooting the second pursuing vehicle, causing the vehicle to become disabled. Whoa. The pursuit can... Takes a high caliber round to disable a vehicle, by the way. ...continues down I-15 towards the Victorville Hesperia area, constantly uh, shooting back at the deputies during that period of time. As they get into the area of Main Street, and what we're talking about is the southwest corner of Main where it intersects the I-15, it appears that the suspect goes off-road. Several jurisdictions at this time are involved in the pursuit and the deputies attempt to contain the suspect in the triangle that's made by the off-ramp, the I-15 freeway, and the Main Street Bridge that goes over the top. As a result of that, a firefight ensues. During that firefight, the suspect vehicle comes to rest, at which time a subject exits the passenger side of the vehicle wearing tactical gear. That subject starts to run towards sheriff's deputies, and during the gunfire goes down. Sheriff's deputies immediately go to clear the vehicle so that they could clear the vehicle, make it safe, and render medical aid. At which time, they contact the subject wearing the tactical gear, and we believe that both the suspect in the vehicle and the person that's contacted with the tactical gear, that that person is our 15-year-old juvenile, uh, Savannah. The suspect we believe is Graciano in the driver's seat of the car. This all still needs to be confirmed in his preliminary information, and we will confirm it through the coroner's office. But as the deputies go up and render medical aid and realize that this is Savannah in the tactical gear, they immediately transport her to an area, a local area hospital. At 11.52 hours, Savannah is pronounced deceased. This investigation is going to take at least 24 hours before we're able to provide you with more information as to what happened and exactly what the circumstances are as it relates to the officer involved situation. But at this time, both Anthony Graciano and Savannah are deceased. Are there any questions? Yeah, Sheriff, sure. recount again how the, the girl wound up being in the way of the, the bullets. Well, a subject that entered, we did not knowing it was a girl initially, was wearing tactical gear. This is in the middle of a firefight. Right. Shooting back and forth with the uh, with with Mr. Graziano, and she she's in the middle of that. Yeah. Right. There may preliminarily again there may be some indications that the passenger of the vehicle, which we believe is Savannah, may have been also involved in some of the fire exchange. What, what do you mean by that? How what what? <laughs> There may be some information that the passenger was involved in firing back at the deputies, and we're still trying to confirm that at this point. You, you 
that was coming from the reason why he said that. And this isn't the video, Josh. This was not the. This is the the first video that he came out with. He also goes. Uh, he, he came out with another video, um, and it's on on Twitter. And I'm going to try to bring it up for you here in just a second. But uh, the outside witnesses, uh, other witnesses, say that they saw her shooting from the window of the vehicle. So that's where he's talking about that they haven't. You know, again, he's doing a good job. These these investigations take you know, a long time to try to go through them uh, and come through them. I don't know 500 days, but. True. I, I, we don't know. It is so early in this investigation, folks. This is highly complex. It covers, as you can imagine, the number of miles coming out from Highway 58 and 395 all the way from the Barstow area. So I'll play it there. Um, and I, and I, I'm going to try to share this. I don't know if it'll let me play the audio in the chats. Get ready. Uh, get ready to tell me yes or no if you can hear it or not. I'm going to just show this one last thing and uh, and we'll see if it works. Uh, well, that is not going to work, is it? Oh, there That's it is. something we found right before the show, guys. That's why we're trying to load it up here because it's a, it's a good asset. About assuming the primary oh. role for this investigation. If it's not. It's not going to play, is it? We can hear it. Just let it play. Updates will be released by Cal DOJ. I would like to take this time to provide an update on yesterday's deputy-involved shooting in Hesperia. Our specialized detectives processed the scene throughout the night and provided me a briefing this morning. Based on the information, evidence suggests that Savannah Graciano was a participant in shooting at our deputies. However. Based on the totality of events and the requirements of Assembly Bill 1506, I have consulted with the California Department of Justice about assuming the primary role for this investigation. If in fact the requirements for AB 1506 are met, and they, I would like to take this time to in his area. Our specialized detectives processed the scene throughout the night and provided me a briefing this morning. Based on the information, evidence suggests that Savannah Graciano was a participant in shooting at our deputies. Boom. Were you guys able to hear that? Yes. Okay. Good. Now, um, so he comes back with another statement and he says, yes, we have confirmed that she was in fact shooting back at the deputies, which, you know, paints a much bigger picture. I, I'm not here to defend the police here. I'm really not. I'm not a bootlicker. I'm not saying that these guys are totally right we can break it down but what i'm telling you is is that 500 days later they have given you a narrative with none of the information that i've given you the mainstream media legacy media has not mentioned that there were witnesses that say that this this girl savannah was shooting at police that's a pretty big deal now here's the thing though the department of justice again knows if she shot at police or she didn't why would they not give you the public which this is a very outrageous case. This is messing with a lot of emotions. Abby Ellsworth, she's got a huge heart. One of the biggest hearts I know in this uh, internet world that we live in. She has a bleeding heart for everybody. Victims, cops, suspects. She wants to find answers. She's a journalist, a really good journalist, I imagine. She's written some books and all the things. You think it's fair for her to see an article like this and have to live and dwell on the fact that the the cops that she trusts and then she reports on would gun down a victim? What if she's a hostage? Is it fair that she has to, to live with, with this anxiety or this angst that the police uh, are so far from perfect that we really need an overhaul of the culture in general? Or do you think it's fair to say, hey guys, in this particular case, we do have evidence that a gun was fired by Savannah? Or if it wasn't fired by Savannah, we know the Department of Justice isn't going to cover the tracks for law enforcement. We know that we know the California, the, the, the Department of Justice, the California State Department of Justice is not going to cover the cops. We know that. And that's why I say if there was not gun residue, you would know that because it would go along with this agenda that the police need reform and overhaul. This is just another opportunity to make law enforcement look bad and to dismantle our justice system to ruin America, which is exactly what's going on with the border crisis, with everything going on in New York City, with the rampant crime that's going on. 
it's it's apparent this whole defund the police like it, it's it's absurd and it's ridiculous and this is all fueled by again a po over politicized department of justice that is failing to give you the american public facts that have nothing to do they're not going to burn a confidential informant in this case there's no confidential informant there's no bigger mafia play in this or some kind of cartel play in this that they're trying to hunt down other suspects. So this guy was a domestic dispute where the father murdered the mother and their daughter willingly, it looks like, got into a car with the father and drove around with the father after having lived with him for over a week in hotels. The reason why they're not giving you the information it's because it, they know that it paints a completely different picture than what the media has already portrayed. Yet again, making the media look just as stupid as they looked during the Breonna Taylor case or the Michael Brown case, the hands up, don't shoot myth that we all know was fake and, and false. Why do they keep doing this to the American? Why do they keep hiding things so that they can trick and dupe guys like Kingslayer in here and make him look like an idiot in the time shots? I don't think Kingslayer is an idiot. I think he just pays attention to legacy media and he and he's hook, line, and sink, sinker on big corporation, big government, non independent journalist propaganda media. He's not, he doesn't want to see any other facts. He wants to believe in the media. Listen, I want to believe in him too. It's a hard road, King Slayer, but one day you're going to wake up and be like, damn, listen, I, I fought a whole entire war in the early 2000s wanting to believe I was doing it for just, but the minute I woke up and realized I, I totally regret it. I think that whole war that I fought in was absolute garbage and was part of the industrial military complex. I had to come to my own terms with this and it sucks. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow. Kingslayer dropping five dollars. He said, I "Didn't say people deserve the iron fist until proven otherwise." I just used the logic towards police. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and if, if that's the case, Mister Kingslayer, if that's the case, you use the logic. Then I think you should be very frustrated in this particular case. Again, maybe the cops are wrong, but you should be very upset in this case as to why the Department of Justice wouldn't tell you the answers to this story. I don't know why they won't, but I can guarantee you that they know if there's gunshot residue on her hand or not, which would prove that whether she shot at police or not, they know that. And they could give you that now, 500 days later. They know, and they're not telling you, they know if there are shell casings on his side of the vehicle, which means they would have been extracted from her side of the vehicle. They would know that. And they would also be able to match the caliber of the shell casings to her gun, again, saying that it would be either... Uh, agreeing with what the sheriff said that she was involved or not. They would know the answer to that. They're not giving it to you, Kingslayer. And you have to ask yourself why. And is this, this Scott guy, is he really an independent journalist? If he's not answering or asking those questions? That's my final words. Those are my final words. I don't have anything else to say and I don't have any answers. And, and if you're asking me, do I think the cops are right in this? I know that you asked me earlier, do I think the cops were justified? And I think in a, in a chaotic moment like this, um, I'd like to say that there's probably more information out there. I would like to know what happened, who put the bullets through the original car. If we know, if if the answers haven't been given to us of, of this, this car, of this other patrol unit that we haven't seen yet, that was shot through the windshield, but we they didn't say who shot through the windshield. Um, you know, if this woman shot from the passenger side into a windshield, she's no longer a hostage. She's no longer someone that's been abducted. She's a bad guy. And the cops are going to go with that information. And there's no quitsies at that point. Um, or there's very little chance of quitsies. Or I'm not betting on my life with the quitsies. You know, if she's our, if, if, if she shot at police, and that's an if, speculation, and she runs at me in body armor after already shooting a cop, if her arms aren't spread way the fuck out and those go anywhere in, I'm not gambling. I have five kids and a wife to take care of. I'm not gambling on that. I'm pulling that trigger. I'm not going to gamble the fact that she's not running up on the cop and she's going to blow his head off. I'm not gambling on that. I'm going to put her down. That's an it. But we don't know because our independent journalists here, our Department of Justice here, hasn't released that information 500 days later. And I think I know why. And I think you know why too, chat folks. I think you guys know, right? Am I wrong? Did I bore you to death there, uh, Tyler? No, I'm just... <clears throat> 
I don't know. I'm trying to research um, why the why the body worn cameras haven't been released yet, but there's nothing there. Well, I mean, I, I, I read cameras. Yeah, they they don't don't not body cameras. Sorry, the the dash cameras. Oh, sorry. Right. Stop yelling at me, John. Sorry, Tyler. I yeah, guess I, I, I've just been sitting here mad this entire time because this fuck face went out and killed his wife. He shot at two people outside of school. They got body armor on. They're they're now they're mobile. What is the fuck? They've already shot at cops. What is the fucking difference between this and an active shooter in terms of the threat that they pose to the public? Are they going to drive across the country and take out a state trooper in another state like that asshole who shot that not New, <laughs> New Mexico state trooper? Uh, I honestly, what the fuck do you want from the police at this point? They're doing what they can to protect the public from these people who are firing rounds as these cars are all around them. Okay, so you're sitting here wondering, should the police pull the trigger in the situation or not? Well, there's a fucking gun battle going on. You also got commuters who are just trying to go to work without taking a stray round while they're driving and crashing the car into other people. This is an extremely dangerous situation. And the longer that you let it go on, the more damage is going to be incurred by everybody who is around that area. And if they get away because you don't want to fire at a kid because you can't tell if she's involved or not, they're going to go somewhere else and they're going to be firing at other police. At some point, you've got to be bigger and badder than the bad guy and you've got to put the threat down. So does that mean at some point something's going to be ugly? Yes. Does that mean that unfortunately a child in this case is going to be shot? Yes. But you cannot have once they bring guns to the battle and you're going to be use, doing a use of force, there's no outcome on it that's going to look good. It's yeah, never, too, it was too late do, for that. Never do look good. You Kings, and I'm only entertaining you uh, because I, I truly appreciate you. I really do. I, I've um, been doing just, cocaine and Gatorade all day and I'm lifting weights right now and I'm going insane. <laughs> King Slayer says, so if someone shoots a police, a police disarms themselves and starts complying with orders, is execution is justified? Question mark. Where is, um, wait, what, what, is that a new one? Or is that, are you reading an old comment? That's an old no, comment. He, just, he just put it up there. Uh, what is, what is this guy? I'm sorry. I mean, I'll answer it. I think it's a good question. So someone shoots that police, disarms themselves, and starts complying with orders. Execution no. justified. What Who the mean? fuck said anybody got executed? Nobody was executed. Like, oh. that, that's what I'm saying. Is this guy like 12 years old? Is he mentally ill? Is he is he no, I mean, I think it's like a, we are? I think it's a legit question. I mean, it's not a legit was, question. At what point? Legit. This is not an. Uh, this is not Eric. You're doing the media thing, or you're vouching for it. At what Stop point it. did any of this execute? Execute. Like, no, where, I got it. I mean, in, Nobody I mean the way the civilians see it is that she was surrendering to police and obeying right. their commands and she got shot for it. Civilians want to see this stuff. Civilians want to see this stuff. They want to see it. They want transparency. This is fucking cop work. This is it. Yeah. I mean, and, and I say in this case, um, if you run towards the police in body armor and a helmet, after just being in a gun battle, there is a high probability that somebody is going to shoot you that didn't hear the orders, didn't hear the commands. Also, I, and this is a training flaw and not a training flaw. It's just, just something that nobody thought about until they see a video like this. But that officer, I bet you, I bet you he's regretting saying, come, come, come. Because you know what come, come, come sounds like? Gun, gun, gun. Yeah. Gun, gun, gun. And when somebody's running hunched over with body armor and you're three guys back in a firefight and your ears are ringing because you've been firing rounds and you hear come 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 you're like layer down bang 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 we watched a hostage rescue that went perfectly a couple of weeks ago on this show and we had two cop gun malfunctions so if you have a cop yelling gun 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 and he's not shooting it's pretty reasonable to be like shit I'm going to take her down for him. He might be out of the gunfight. Maybe his finger's blown off. I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff um, happen in so, gunfights. So, so when, when you when you hear come, 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 you lay her down and bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 brother. <laughs> come. Say it again, baby. But I mean, like, listen, I come and gun sound a lot alike, right? And they're both three-letter words. Come, C-U-M, guns, G-U-N. I mean, not too far off from each other. Am I right? Oh, you said put the come in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> You'd like, you'd, like to be, you'd like to have an organized surrender, but it, once you're firing at, at the cops, I'm sorry, but it's on. And and if you are if you are at a place in life where you have already murdered your wife and shot at two other people, and you're firing at the police, I get that this you know is a 15 year old girl, so like she's got some different agency or whatever. But they're in way too deep at this point. And you, saying that you want an organized and peaceful surrender while you're having a gun battle on the side of the road is one too many things to ask for. This is the fog of war. And when shots are going off, like I said before, the damage is just multiplying the longer it goes on. And yeah. 
I, I, and it, with, with the crossfire situation, like what Tyler said with the multiple agencies, and you do the best you can, right? We train, we have incident command, we have one person giving commands at the scene, we're trying, we want to get her out of her. Every single cop believed this was an Amber Alert and they were rescuing a hostage until they were taking rounds from her. That that completely changed the situation. And when she leveled that gun and you could say whether she's 15, whether she's you know, morally responsible for the choices she was making, she was you know, Stockholm by her dad or whatever. It, once she points a gun at the cops, I mean, you get what you get. And that's really fucking sad, but that's life. You can't say that there's no consequences for the choices that you make in life. And if you're pointing a gun at a cop, you basically take in your own life. I would, I would, I would be more on your uh, your opinionated side on this, King Slayer. Had the Department of Justice or whoever's doing this investigation come out and said, not only was this girl shot while running towards police, but there was no evidence that she was involved in this gun battle at all. Then I would be just as outraged as you. I would be like, damn. That sucks. That would be a shitty position to be in. Uh, those cops aren't trained for that. We don't train, you know, street cops don't train for. Fortunately, this shit does not happen at the level that people want it to happen. It, right. wouldn't, mat it wouldn't matter if you train for this anyway. No amount of training can can stack up against the, the real con the real engagement, though, because you can never train for this exact situation. Look at just look at the tactics of where they're at, where they they have these three exit ramps coming together, and you have crossfire, and you have all these these civilians driving around. How the hell are you supposed to train for this exact situation? And even if you did, you're never going to get this situation then, and you're going to have a hundred others that you never trained for because you were training for this one. So all you can train to do is the best you can. And when that situation comes, it's still never going to be 100%. You can't go into a situ like, situation like this and have a, a, an expectation of a perfect outcome. Everybody's fine. Slap on the back. Nobody got wasted unnecessarily. It's not reasonable. I get so sick of people demanding a level of perfection out of the police that we can't demand out of any other industry. I can't get my goddamn person who sold me a truck to send me a title in the mail but he we're supposed to have some kind of level of perfection from the police that nobody gets shot especially yeah. when the it's these people who are waking up like i said choosing violence grabbing a gun and pointing it at the cops but you're going to criticize the police for not doing a perfect job uh, i want to tell this story really quickly just to king slayers and, and and for the new listeners that we have out there it's a very quick story normally we try to keep this around an hour we'll go a little bit late i, I might have told this story on abby ellsworth being a police officer podcast i'm not sure uh it's 100 a true story i was on a special project uh and, and our project was to uh collect guns in a known gang area where a gang war was uh ensuing We'd had multiple, I think there was like five, five people shot one night um, in this strange like gang on gang. They were drive by, they were chasing each other and they were trying to whack each other. They were, that was it. And so um, we're in this area and anybody leaving this block, we're going to try to get a stop on the car because we want to know where they're going, where they're coming from. And is there's any guns in the car because we don't want anybody else to get shot. And we know that everybody leaving this block is more likely than not a part of this gang. So this car leaves full of teenagers, right? Fighting age teenagers. So um, our chances are pretty good that we've got some gang members leaving this very small cul-de-sac that's predominantly housed by gang members. I would say 98% gang members. And so this vehicle goes down the road and we want some backup. Me and my partner want some backup because it looks like there's three or four teenagers in this car. We don't want to get in a gun battle, you know, with four teenagers and there's only two of us. So um, this car knows that we're behind it. It ends up taking a right down an actually nice neighborhood about a mile from where we first got behind them. Now they pull down this nice neighborhood and they pull over and they pull themselves over very strange because we didn't light them up and the driver yells out the window why are you pulling me and my driver says why we didn't pull over actually we were going to at some point but uh you're pulling yourself over what's going on and so the while they're talking to my driver i had walked up to the b pillar of the passenger side of the vehicle the b pillar being the back window pillar so the passenger never saw me and the passenger was hunched over looking out the driver's side window at my partner and he starts manipulating his pocket he's trying to slowly slide his hand into his pocket and i'm watching he doesn't know i'm there watching and i want to see was it drugs that he's going to try to drop in between the door that's what I thought. Could it be a gun? Sure, but most likely not. He's probably trying to hide some drugs. Most of these kids, that's what they do. But all of a sudden, 
I see his fist roll up into his pocket and it's not pinching like it would be drugs. It's rolling into a fist, meaning that there's a big object in his pocket. So I walk up and I tap on the window to get his attention because I don't want my partner to get shot. And he snaps his head around and all of a sudden the vein in his neck is pumping out of his neck. This dude's eyes are like a deer in the headlight. And I know instantly, I know this look. I'm like, yo, I just caught you doing some serious shit. And now the driver's starting to panic. He's stuttering. He doesn't know what to say. I said, hey, pull the driver out right now. I said, passenger, don't move. The passenger's like, man, why you pull us over? I want a black officer here. Give me a black officer. We ain't done nothing wrong. Y'all been profiling us from the beginning. I said, get this guy out of the car right now. Get the driver out of the car right now. Passengers, don't move. You know, the two guys in the back seat and the one guy in the front seat, they're all yelling. He starts removing the vehicle. By the way, uh, at this time, a, a partner comes in. He starts removing the third guy. There was actually three, not four in the car. And he removes the guys from the back seat. And I tell the passenger, I said, listen to me very closely, sir. This guy was, I don't know, 16 to 18, maybe 20 years old at the most. I don't know when I'm standing there. And I said, sir, be, I just, I want you to understand this right now. I need you to understand this. I perceive that what is in your pocket right now is a gun. And he interrupts me. Nah, man, you want it to be a gun. You trying to shoot an N-word out here tonight. You're trying to shoot an N-word. You know this ain't a gun. This is my cell phone, motherfucker. You know, you're you trying to, I want a black cop here. I want a black supervisor. Sir, calm down and stop interrupting me. I need you to know this. What I perceive in your pocket that you say is a cell phone, I perceive to be a gun. But I'm going to treat it like it's a gun because my life comes first. And if you do anything but what I tell you, I am going to shoot you. Man, somebody help me. Somebody help me, man. This cop's crazy. This cop wants to kill me. Sir, I don't want to kill you. That's why I'm talking to you like this. Put your hands on the dashboards and do not move them. My gun is out at this point. And I said, what is in your pocket? Man, I told you it's a cell phone. It's a cell phone in your pocket. Why is it shaped like a gun? Man, it ain't shaped like a gun. You know it's not shaped like a gun. You know you clown and you lying. He's talking to my body camera at this point, like looking dead at it. He wants it to be known that what's in his pocket is a cell phone. I said, very good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step you out of the car. And then what we're going to do is you're going to put your left hand on your head. I'm going to grab your right hand. I'm going to rotate you out of the vehicle and I'm going to softly lower you onto the pavement. I'm going to handcuff both your hands behind your back. I'm going to roll you to your side and I'm going to remove the cell phone or gun from your pocket. Do you understand those commands? Man, I don't want you touching me. Oh, I'm 100% about to touch you. I just want you to know everything I'm about to do because if you do not comply with me, I'm going to back off and I'm going to kill you. I say this very matter-of-factly. And he says, man, please get me another cop here. I need a black cop here. You're trying to kill a, an inward, staring, pleading with my body camera on my chest. He wants to kill an inward tonight. Sir, I don't want to kill an inward tonight. I don't want to kill anybody tonight. I want you to know what I'm telling you and I want you to obey my commands. And this will, I'll get the cell phone and you can make a complaint that I pulled my gun on you for no reason. So I put your hand on top of your head. He puts his hand on top of his head, he puts his hand out the window. Everything's going nicely. I go to pull him out of the car. As soon as we crest the frame of the door, I'm about to hip shut the door with my ass. He jerks and tries to run. It doesn't work out. I plant him into the concrete. He rolls over, reaches into his waistband. I scream, gun, gun, gun. My partner runs around. My partner gets his gun out, says, move, get out of the way. I start to punch this man in the face, punch after punch after punch. The guy's like, get out of the way. I'm going to shoot him. I punch, I punch. The young man turns his head away from me. I punch, I punch. He turns his face right back to me. I punch him again. His head bounces off the, the concrete. His eyes roll into the back of his head. His body tenses up. And I know it's the shot that knocked him out. My arm is already up in the air and it's coming down for shot number 10 or 11. And I hit him one more time. And in that moment, I tell myself, too far. You shouldn't have hit him that last time. Fuck, I shouldn't have hit him that last time. He was already out, but I couldn't stop my body. My body was already in motion, but I was panicking in my brain. I'm like, God damn it. They're going to see that one on body camera. I shouldn't have given him that last punch. We roll him over and his hand is still on the gun, which is a stolen 380 pistol that was stolen from a canine officer's house only a week prior. Thank God it was a gun and not a cell phone. I'm still scared though that I punched somebody in the face too many times the next night I get called into the supervisor's office and I'm like, oh shit. And I get in there and there's my lieutenant. There's my sergeant and maybe another sergeant. Yeah, there's a, there's a painting that's descriptive in the book of the incident. 
And I'm sitting there and uh, they say, I want to talk about last night. And I'm prepared for it. I'm like, wow, I'm about to get burned for this. This dude was going to try to kill me and I'm going to get hung up for punching him too many times. And they sent me down. They said, hey, what were you trained to do in the academy when somebody has a gun and you know it to be a gun? What were you trained to do? I said, shoot him. Yeah, you were trained to shoot him. Why didn't you shoot him? I didn't know if it was a gun. Eric, we watched your body camera. You told the you told the guy that what you perceived in his pocket was a gun, that it even had the shape of a gun in his pocket. Yeah, but he he was very adamant that it was a cell phone. He says, I you saw that it was a gun. Who cares what he said? Then you got him out of the car. You yelled, gun, gun, gun. And you begin to punch him in the face. At what point? Did you not think that you should shoot him? What if you would have broke your hand and you were out of the fight and he rolled over and shot you? What if when he turned his head, he got that gun out and shot your partner? Why didn't you shoot him? And I said, excuse me, am I, am I in trouble for not shooting this guy? No, you're not in trouble, but we want you to understand that this was a deadly force situation and you didn't use deadly force. Do you need to go back through training or do we need to do some reality-based training to make you understand that you should. And then my lieutenant, I believe it was a lieutenant, interrupts. And he says, you could have shot that man six times in his back and been fully justified for it. He was going to kill you. And I didn't, you know, that's the story. There's nothing more that comes of it. I didn't get in trouble. I didn't have to do any more reality-based training. But what they said was right. And so the reason why I tell you the story and the point of the story is, is that what if it was a cell phone? And I punched the brakes off of this dude and knocked him out over a cell phone for what I perceived was a gun. Luckily for me, it was a gun. Are we, as police officers and law enforcement officers, are we required to gamble with our lives? Is that what the citizens want us to do is gamble as if we were in Vegas with our lives? Is there a percentage we should go by? Hey, there's a 20% chance that could be a gun in his pocket. And as long as he obeys me, I won't shoot him. But if he disobeys me, I'm going to shoot him over this 20%. Is it 30%? Is it 40%? 50 60 what, what, Where is the line? At what point do we not gamble or gamble over something like this? I don't know. These are just questions I have as a police officer. This is what we face. This is the real deal shit. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like even what I say or, or even agree with it. I'm only telling you my realities as a police officer. And my reality is, is that... I don't think in my own personal mind, having five children, or I had three at the time of that incident and a loving wife and a partner, I wasn't willing to go to prison to shoot somebody for the wrong reasons. And so I used my fists, which I'm really good with. I'm still a pretty good fighter. I, I, I mean, not a great fighter when it comes to jujitsu, but like if somebody wants to throw hands, I'm pretty fucking good at it. And I thought that my fist would work. But what if my hand broke? I would later go on in my career to punch somebody in the back of the head and shatter my arm and end up in a cast. So it can happen. Does happen. Also, I had a murder suspect break my leg. Also, I had my, my buddy's been shot and a couple of my friends have been shot and they have shot other people. And these are cops. This is shit that cops see every day. Go listen to Abby Ellsworth's... Uh, 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 go listen to Abby Ellsworth on being a police officer podcast. I mean, she's a, a liberal left-wing journalist. I believe she's left-wing. Oh, that's what she's I think. not left-wing. Well, she was left wing at some point, correct? I think, I think if anything, she's centrist right now, but I mean, she's a journalist in Washington state, there's gotta be a little left blood running through her at some point. Right. I don't, I don't know that she was a journalist. I think, you know, I think she was like a cyclist or something. I thought she was a journalist. She's a that journalist now. A yeah. Pseudo name. So Abby, just get on the call. show and send me your resume. She says, she I'm says not I'm left not left wing. I think wow. She wants to make that perfectly clear. Abby, I never would have guessed that. I've, I've always thought like, I don't know. For some reason, Abby, I don't know. I just had this thing in my brain that you, maybe you were a little bit left wing, but still supported police. I mean, I don't know. Boy, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I, I enjoy your podcast a lot, but I, mean, I guess my point there with, with her being left or right is that it's a very objective podcast. She does a very good job of just listening to the stories of police officers. So that's where I was going. So Kingsley, if you want to hear like kind of non-biased stories, check out On Being a Police Officer podcast. I think she does a great job. There she goes. She says, I'm not conservative either. Good. I, I, said, said, she, right, right? I said she was centrist. I nailed it. <laughs>
you nailed it. So I, and that was my point there is that it's a very good look at, you know, me, I obviously I'm biased because I'm on the side of police and I was police. So, um, I'm like a um, police libertarian. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, you know, and, uh, it, it, this was a good podcast. I like people like Kingslayer being in the chats. Um, you know, I think there's, I, I think citizens have a right to answer Kingslayer, Damocles or whatever. If you're old enough, if you're 18 or older, I encourage you to go do a ride along in your uh, town. Uh, it's your God given right to do so. Uh, you just call in and tell me you want to ride along and, and be a man about it. Do it on a Friday night and tell me you want the hardest area of town and you want it with the hardest working cop and ride front seat to the greatest show on earth. And uh, you're going to have no gun. You'll, you'll have a bulletproof vest and you're going to get to do, you know, I mean, my ride alongs would go on like 20 different calls in a night. And they would be completely exhausted by 6 a.m. And they'd be like, dude, I cannot believe I saw a dude with his jaw broke. I saw another dude with a knife sticking out of his back. I went to three domestic violence cases. I went to a shoplifting call. I mean, there's a lot that can happen in, in with big city crime on a Friday night. And I encourage you to go do a ride along and whatever big city is closest to you. And, uh, and, and then you can see for yourself what kind of people cops really are and what they really deal with. Uh, yeah, I just want to just say thanks to those guys for ending the threat. I just final thought. I don't know who they won't shoot. If they were shooting two people outside of school, he'd already killed his wife. They had shot at the police. If they get away, who is it that they won't shoot? So it's not perfection. And I think it's perfectly fine to question those in authority, to question your government. I think you should do that. But the expectation of perfection regarding a situation, the police, ultimately, they don't even want to be involved in. Trust me, I know cops. They want to sit on their fat cop asses and eat donuts and not get called to this shit. They don't want to be shooting at 15 year olds. The 15 year old and her dad started this. Right. And they have they have an ultimate advantage because they know what they're planning to do. The cops only can react. So the cops are a step behind. They've got to protect the public. So I, I guess I'm grateful that the public was protected from them and no other innocent people were involved. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Tyler from Antihero, by the way. I don't know what the fuck happened to Tyler. He like died. He like has to work. away and died. He probably has to work. Um, he often works on Fridays. So right. I, well, you know, he's go, supposed go to be for an hour. An Antihero so. podcast. We had him in here for two hours. So I appreciate his time. Um, I love all you guys in the chats having a good time. Don't take it too, too personally. It's just the internet. We all know the internet's not real. Um, you guys try to get along and uh, listen, Kingslayer, feel free to jump in here anytime and ask questions. Uh, I'll try to do my best to answer them as reasonably as possible. As long as you're asking reasonable questions, I didn't think your questions were unreasonable. I have no problems answering them. Um, I'm not I'm afraid. The of the I'm the one that's here to be unreasonable. You let me do that. But yeah, yeah. If you want to, if you really want to to pursue this, I, I would. The, the big question here is why is the Department of Justice giving out vital information um, that could either completely make these cops look like assholes or it could completely make her look like an asshole? And they're not giving you that. And I would believe that they're not giving you that. Being that it's California's Department of Justice, I would have to assume they're not giving that information because it's going to make the. Now, listen, maybe I'm wrong. And I'll, I'll back myself up and say I was wrong. And I'll say, Stop damn. Wrong. We, 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 oh. can't find, we can't find anything out about this guy. We can't find anything out about the shots fired outside the school, which should have been a huge part of this case. Because if you're developing, everything is all about probable cause, right? And everything that's already happened before. Just the mere fact that he's, he's already a felon in flight and possibly abducting this girl. And I get, I get, I understand the Amber Alert because it's like, when you have to issue an amber, amber alert, you have almost no complete information and you have to hurry because you're trying to get them while they're still in the same state, the same geographic area. You want people looking out for the vehicle. So sometimes you're going to err on the side of caution. You're going to err on the, girl, on the side of the girl's safety and say, well, she was probably abducted. Particularly <laughs> since, as Tyler said, these situations occur so often. So you try to put that out with incomplete information. But once it turns out that she's a fully engaged combatant, you just have to do what you could do to protect the rest of the public. Kingslayer, you haven't been here long enough, buddy. I don't ban anybody. Uh, I love, is it discourse, right? Is that the right word, discourse? Uh, Abby says oh, yeah. discourse without discord, but we can have a little discord here. That's okay. I mean, you, we can have back and forth. I think I like we're all, I'm, we're not, all I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to ban you. Uh, I think everybody's entitled to their opinion. And, and I think sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And there's a lot of things that I don't know on the civilian side because of, of my law enforcement experience. And, 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 uh, I, as a civilian, I, I've been able to learn, um, 
kind of some of the downfalls of policing and uh, and I am critical of policing, but I also I've also been there and I know all the things that they have to go through and the enormous and insane amount of training that you have to go through the, as a police officer and it's all confusing and you're not really getting any training. If I sit you down um, and give you a four hour block of instruction on how to deal with an autistic kid five years ago, I mean, should I expect that you retained all that information that you got five years ago and that you're going to know how to properly apply it in this specific, um, in this specific situation and, you know, coupled with, you know, you, you, gosh, the cops go through everything, drug recognition, alcohol recognition. You're going through crime scene, which setting up a crime scene is insanely difficult. Crime scene recorders, where the crime scene tape goes is 100 feet to begin with. Is it 50 feet to begin with? Who has the evidence cards? Where are they located in your car? You know, what, what do you take to the evidence? Where do you back in and where do you back out? What takes, Who's in charge of the evidence collection? Those all have to be taught. Um, who do you call first? Who do you call second? Who do you call last? When do you call a supervisor? Um, if it's a stabbing suspect is the person still alive do you need to tie a tourniquet do you need to get first aid um which ambulance are you going to call which county's coming to get you i mean the amount of information that you have to do as a cop plus you have to know how to fire your weapon you know after i use your taser you have to know how to use radar lidar you have to know how to get on the stand and present a case to all this you have to type hordes of reports enormous amounts of paperwork so you have to be grammatically correct um these reports get rejected all the time they get read in front of thousands and thousands of people um embarrassingly enough they come out with the media i mean there's just so much that a cop has to do tactical driving tactical moving dealing with active shooters i mean at what point i mean you can't expect cops to be perfect at everything and what sucks is that cops get good at one thing and they're shitty at everything else and so oftentimes the videos that you see is this cop might have been amazing at uh you know mediating domestic violence but he's complete shit at dealing uh with a drunk driver and i'm, I'm a guilty guy like I, I wouldn't know the first thing of how to do a dui investigation i sucked at it so i called somebody else to do them for me uh i don't know all that i can't memorize all the walk and turn tests and the one leg stand tests and the you know I, I don't remember how to do all that shit so i would just call somebody that was a really great expert at it but you know what when these dui nerds go to a domestic and they need shit to get mediated they would call me because I got the gift of gab, baby. I don't want to talk people down. I got, you know, but not all cops. Like, Look at, imagine if Josh had to talk you down. Jesus. Probably be like your number one cheerleader. would be like, just do it. Do it, bitch. Also, do which it. cop is psychic and knows when someone's actually giving up versus charging them with tactical gear? The, the situation's just too unknowable. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, dude. It's, it's just a hard situation. I mean, I'm in a gunfight and somebody's running at me with battle armor on. Yeah. Like I said, if their arms aren't stretched way the fuck out and you know, and again, that's not if I catch them out of the corner of my eye. I mean, how do we know that the cop that shot her wasn't like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? Like you got a split second to make that decision when somebody had body armor. And I'll promise you this, bro. I, I was in law enforcement. I was in a lot of shit. Uh, I was also in the military. Never once has anybody ran at me in body armor. So no, I'm not even sure how I would treat that. It just doesn't happen. It's not something I was trained for. It's not something that was, you know, I pulled one dude over that was wearing a bulletproof vest and he was a gang member and he happened to have a gun and a machete on him and I took him to jail and he was wanted for some other shit, but like he didn't run at me, you know, if he would have ran at me, I would have killed him. So easy. Uh, um, very, very poor tactics. But what do you expect <laughs> from a 15 year old? This is probably her first gun battle. Yeah. I mean, listen, she's going to make mistakes too, as she did. She'll, I she'll, did. Do, be she'll do better next time. Uh, yeah, shout out to One More and I'm Out of Here podcast for giving me this awesome gift after going on their podcast. And they now podcast with us every Thursday with sports news. <clears throat> He's a firefighter perspective. So, um, you know, stick around for our Thursday sports shows every Thursday night with John and uh, a fire chief to keep you well around. We do society and culture. And uh, on Monday, true crime on Tuesday, political news, which oh, I'm sure Kingsley would love that. Uh, uh, <laughs> love our political news on Wednesday, which I nailed it this last Wednesday, though. I fucking, I nailed it. I was You got all the right. politics. You got it all. I did good. I got it good. So, um, you know, it was a big channel. It's all to keep you guys awake, informed and entertained. Um, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Give us a five-star rating or review. And listen, if you hate me that much, go give me a one-star rating or review. I don't care. If you hate us, leave a um, comment below because it's great for the algorithm. Rhythm. it is it's great i could do it yeah well, listen at the end of the day i don't don't necessarily care but um but we appreciate you guys and all your time and everything that you guys do till next time guns up giddy up 
Stay awake, stay alert, stay alive. Do all the things. Don't get shot in the face. Don't get raped. James don't get Slayer, raped all these violence. people you want held accountable are being held accountable. They're all being held accountable. All right, guns up, giddy up. <laughs>